Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming a book haul and I'm finally filming a haul for all the books that I bought when in Japan. So the last book haul I posted was an exclusive editions book haul with all the books I bought in Japan but sent home. But now is all the books that I bought in Japan but I had in Japan with me. And it turned out that while I didn't actually buy that many, I needed to send things home because there were actually still too many. Well, bang, could have never had imagined. It's still like, not like a lot. I haven't counted them over, but we'll do that in the end. So I'm going in order as I bought them. I was gonna film a haul when I was in Japan, but that never happened. So now we are here at home, months later when I was there and film a haul, it works, but also, I miss it a lot. Okay, so there's Japanese names for some of these things and I don't remember them and I'm too lazy to look them up, so I'm sorry, just call me a bad Japanese student, that's all. The first manga I bought was actually March Comes In Like a Lion, volume one, by Shika Umino. And this one is an anime that I watched and really enjoyed. Not all of it though. And it's actually not translated as I'm speaking right now in this video to English. So you could only read in Japanese, which is why I thought it was perfect to buy the Japanese edition since can't read it otherwise and it's so cute I just love the sizes of manga compared to the English sizes and they're also so cheap compared to the English prices as well I have watched the anime so I think it could be easy to read it but I still haven't started it when I was reading English and I only knew Norwegian I learned English really well because I read English books. I feel like my Japanese would be much better if I managed to get myself to read some Japanese. Just haven't yet because the effort, the effort, that's all. The second book I bought in Japan, I'm not gonna count every single one. Oh my God, I don't know why I said it like that. It's Noragami by Adashi Toka. This is one of my favorite series and I watched anime and I have all the mangas in English looking all over my shelf to make sure. And I wanted in Japanese. This actually was in my local bookstore once in Japanese as well, but I didn't buy it then for some reason. And now I found it in Japan and of course had to buy the first volume. Really do want to read in Japanese since this is a story that's so known to me. It would be great. Also I could have the English version open and the Japanese version open at the same time and if that could work and I could learn from that. I then bought Harry Potter by G.K. Rowling, the first book and this one is obviously if you can't see the Hufflepuff version and it's like in hardcover and has like the Hufflepuff pattern and everything. It's not completely I'm looking similar to like the English Hufflepuff versions and I just wanted a Japanese one and when I bought it in the store I actually didn't know if it was the first or second one yet because I didn't bother translating it but I was fine with either way. It's the first one actually so it's perfect. They had of course a billion different kinds of Harry Potter editions but I like this one because you know Hufflepuff and everything so I got myself my own house edition in Japanese which is very cool and one day if I want to read Harry Potter in Japanese I have the option to yay 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 I just love how they look in the inside it's very pretty so yay not all the books here are just Japanese editions by the way I have other English books as well you will see we have the little prince in Japanese as well and I actually don't have an English version of this and I haven't there's a hair I haven't read it either so yeah I just saw this in like the food store that we went to with uni and I just decided to buy it it was very cheap as well and it's just super cute I think yeah, it has illustrations and stuff. I don't know how the English version actually is. It probably has illustrations as well. But it's a very tiny, cute little book. Even with like a bookmark thing. And I think it could be an easy read. But yeah, I'm looking at the kanjis right now. And I never want to look at kanjis again. So there we have that as well. But do not regret buying this at all. It's also super tiny. It's even tinier than a manga. <laughs> this was the manga. And this is this. So it's even tinier. It's so tiny and cute. Perfect like pocket book. <laughs> But it's not chill to read because I need to think, so it counters that. I actually remember buying all these books actually around my birthday time, but we have Chronicles of Narnia, all in Japanese. I saw this the first time I was in this kind of bookstore and I didn't pick it up and then I regretted it, but then we went back. My best friend, I think, bought it for my birthday. We will have to open it now to show you guys. It's so cute. I don't have any other editions of Narnia. I do want to read them again in English and read them in Japanese. I don't know how complicated it would be for me, but they look like this. They have these thingies around them though, so you can't, uh, you can't see the cover properly. They look like this. Can you even see? I don't even know. They have like different pattern things on them. Wait, 
I would take out one. Where's the first one? So if I take away this shit around it, not shit, you see it's like illustrations like this on it. And I think it's different on every single one. I think Narnia wouldn't be that easy to read in Japanese, but if I wanted to practice, it would be great practice for me. But do I practice? No. But yeah, great. Looks not complicated at all, but still less complicated than if I read like a completely adult fiction book. But I feel like the language in Narnia wasn't the easiest to read even on the region for me as a kid, so I don't even know how it would be. I really like this. So why do I like Japanese sizes of books so much? They're so nice and tiny, I love it. I don't regret buying this one at all. Ooh, in the box by the way. It's like illustrations and stuff. It's really nice. It's a really nice box. And I could just put them all in here and close it off. It's the sweetest thing. I really like this one, okay? It was a good purchase or gift. Ta-da! So I bought another book that I already knew about, which is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. And of course I have it in English and yes, it has its own Japanese title. I could read this. But now my brain is like messing myself up and if you like your person starts Japanese you will probably make fun of me for not being able to read this right now. I'm really sorry. I'm also very conscious about speaking Japanese in front of other people so I probably wouldn't do that anyway, just saying. But yeah, this is A Monster Calls which is a really known YA novel and it's really nice. And I wanted this edition because it's so pretty. Kept all the illustrations and stuff in it as well. And I think this is a known story. Again, it would be super nice for me to read and practice Japanese. Also have, as I said, the English version, so I could have them side by side, but I have not done that. Also, look how pretty it is. I don't know how the English hardcore is, because I only have it in like a paperback thing, but I don't know if it's similar, but it's really pretty. And it's not the same as like the small paperbacks in Japanese. I wanted a nice hardcover, do not regret. Hopefully, if I want to practice, I get the perfect time. I'm like shaming myself really hard in this video, I feel like. And then I bought another known Japanese edition, which is Carval. Known Japanese edition, I meant a known YA novel. And Carval is a really popular YA novel. I did read it actually while I was there on Kindle. It's really pretty, by the way. It was my favorite maybe, but I don't regret buying this pretty Japanese edition. Again, could have them side by side. But yeah, this one is like paperback-ish. And I think most is like kind of paperback is what the impression I got of the books over there at least. Unless there's kind of special editions. But yeah, it's just, this is full text. So to read this, I need to have brain cells and I do not have that. So I don't know. It would be really nice practice though. But yeah. Here you can read it with me. Looks understandable to you, because it don't look understandable to me. I'm just joking, halfway. But yeah, it's a pretty book. I feel like these flaps you could totally like take off, but since I got them with them, I'm just like keeping them forever. Now I actually have Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. I did read this in Japan. All the English books I have there, here. I did read over there. So yeah, only about books for when like I knew for sure 100% I was gonna read it or else it would be a waste of space in English. And this one was one of the most hyped books of the year. It's about the president of the United States son and the prince of England and they fall in love. And there was so much hype around it. I wanted to actually audiobook it, but I never did. So I just decided to buy a copy for some reason. I don't even know now. Kind of disappointing actually, but yeah, I have addition here. Yay. And then for my birthday, I also bought myself an old crate and then we got We Hunt a Flame by Hafsa Faisal and this one I already read too. And it is the old crate exclusive edition. This was one of my most anticipated reasons that year as well, which is one of the reasons I bought the box because I wanted an exclusive edition. Knew this was gonna be in there, but then I got Disappointed as well. This is not a review video though, Sandra, but still like want to show it off. But it's a very pretty book I am gonna read a sequel on everything. We then have volume 2 and 3 and March comes in like a lion So I just continue buying the series. This is all the ones I'm having it though And I don't haven't read any of them, but I really want to. They are so cute. Oh my god, look at them! This is just a precious thing. Did I even say what it was about earlier? It's about this main character here and he plays Japanese Chess, which now has a name. Oh my god, brain fart. What's it called? 
well whatever it has a name i do know the name but now my brain is like i'm dying okay i'm literally dying and yeah it's about him also being friends with his family because no one takes care of him and they like make his stone cold heart soft and it's very like very contemporary but it's very sweet so there you have that really do recommend the anime for example and uh, to read this if you can in japanese again don't think there is english editions yet pretty 100 percent sure then also bought Ash, whoa, that just swung around. <laughs> it scared me. I bought Ash Warbringer and Lux, and this one actually didn't revive until many months later because it was a pre order, but they are here together now. These are both League of Legends comics that League of Legends is what's called collaborating with Marvel. Up in the corner, it says Marvel, look. Yay. And uh, they are best friends now. No, but they're collaborating to make these comics. It is in addition to the League of Legends world and it's about the different champions and stuff in there. And for a person who loves reading and books, comics, graphic novels, mangas, everything, and loves League of Legends, which is my favorite game of all time, it's the one game I've stuck with for so many years. And they made freaking books out of it. It just, my heart, they took my two favorite hobbies and mixed them together and it's the best thing. Here we get the orange swords for these two characters. Lux is like one of my favorite characters in the game and Ash is lovely. And we also see of course other characters than just these two. There's a new one coming really soon with Sad and I'm so excited. I will read these forever. Like comics, Marvel, League of Legends, yay. I think you can read this without playing the game. But of course it has so much impact on me because League of Legends matters so much to me. I then got sent a box full of arcs from my friend Justine. I have a full unboxing on my channel of this where I see them all for the first time. And I have a review up for every single book of this on my channel. So I don't feel like there's need to talk that long about these so i will just show them all to you because i did get them in japan but i'm not gonna stop with every single one because time and stuff so let's do this frank Milo by david yoon imagine every friend by stephen chabokski the merciful crow by margaret owen the firekeeper by gc cervantes Loki Where Mischief Lies by Mackenzie Lee, Cryos War by Nina Varela, The Beautiful by Renee Adier, Christian Strong Pressures a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbalia, The Starly Sea by Erin Morgenstern, The Grenever Deception by Kirsten White, Girls of Stone and Shadow by Natasha Nagan, A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer, Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roarenhorse, and last but not least, The Gravity of Us by Phil Stantner. So, as I said, I have read all of those, review of all of those on my channel as well as an unboxing. You can link them all down below. That would just take like 10% more effort. I can do that. So I got sent all of them by Justine and of course I sent them to Japan because I want to read them all before release date obviously and make reviews so that is why I sent them all to Japan. When I was going to go home I realized actually how many books there were but it went fine. They're all here now. It's okay. My precious arcs. I then also went to Tokyo and Kyoto in the summer break and I went to the Ghibli Museum and then I bought one book there which is My Neighbor Totoro or Tonari no Totoro which is like a book. It's a children's book of the adaption. It's not a lot of text in it but it's illustrations and stuff. It's baby text but I feel like this I could read and still be a tiny bit of practice for me. I feel like it's like maybe a bit too baby for me but I really wanted it and it was very sweet. There had other books there but I wanted one I actually could read. One day I will sit down and actually go through this and maybe actually understand something so that would be great. No regrets to buy this tiny sweet book. Then my best friend surprised me for Christmas and got me Mistborn in Japanese. She bought these on Amazon used I believe because someone didn't want them. They were like super cheap and we got all the parts. We I say I got all the parts for the first book. So they are split in parts because books are enormous and this is all the final empire but like split in parts. So they all had different covers and they're so pretty. I love them. I love that my best friend surprised me. Of course, I would love to have the rest of the series, but I'm fine to have these at least, and they mean a lot to me. I think like just reading like an easy book like Harry Potter scares me into reading Japanese. Reading this in Japanese scares me relentless. Or even like reading a manga Japanese, and then we have these. I don't see that happening, but of course it would be very good practice. And also I have the English edition, so I could have them open at the same time, etc. Uh, but having these editions that are not now in sale anymore means a lot. It's my favorite book, so 
Yay! I'm very happy. And then for Christmas, also got these five mangas here. The English title is Skeleton Knight in Another World, and they are actually also in English, but my roommates got them for me, and I got my Japanese ones because they're like, practice and also you in Japan, and it's really nice of them. So they got me all five of them, and of course, I feel like I should read them, not just because of a gift, because practice and everything. And I never had heard about it before, but it's definitely like, another world thingy where they go into another world like I really enjoy and have watched so much of and read a lot of so it's definitely my thing and yeah this is how they look like I'm showing you really badly I think I'm excited I think when I get to them I think it will be cool if I manage to read these at least I think manga is a good place to start if I'm gonna start reading Japanese at least. And then almost for the last books that I have here, I got like an Omoomin cake because Nikki, who is the sweetest by the way, from Exo Nikki, is that what her channel is called? Oh my God. Was like reading so many Moomin books and it made me think about Moomin. And then I went to the store and was like, do you have Moomin books? And I came with this huge bag of Moomin books. And I of course felt like I had to buy some because I thought they were just on my shelf, but they got every single Moomin book in the store and showing them to me. So I picked out like four that I bought. So this one was kind of a fail I feel like. It has Moomin illustrations but it's like by Lewis Carroll and then Tove Jansson which is the author of Moomin and then Hiroshi Homura, I see the translator maybe. And it's like I think Lewis Carroll's poems or story or verses and then her illustrations they mix them together. I am so confused what this book actually is. I mostly bought it because it was cute and now I'm like why did I buy this? But it's kind of like simplified text in it. So I feel like I could maybe read it and enjoy it. I don't even know. I don't even know what this is, but I have it now. So yay, brought it all the way from Japan. I then also got this super baby book of Moomin, which is like so easy to read. Like it's a baby book. Look at this, it's baby. But it has like sticky pages. And I have these stickers here that I can like, I think move around. I haven't done it yet. And I basically bought it for the stickers. <laughs> Is that okay as an adult to buy a book only for these babies here? Like seriously? And yeah, it's a baby book. And that's all. I literally bought a baby book for myself in Japanese. That's fine. And then I actually bought like an actual Moomin story, which is like a Christmas story. And it's of course illustrated. Not of course overly complicated, but I feel like this I could read and understand at least and enjoy instead of like buying a book that I can understand anything in. Complicated probably enough for me. I'm still a bit baby, but baby is the best way to go. Good way to go if you want to learn the language, I think. And then the last one is like, a Moomin book with words, so it is actually in Finnish, English and Norwegian, uh, not Norwegian, Japanese, what is happening? And like, it's like the different things in the Moomin Valley and then like you have the Finnish word and the Japanese word and the English word. So like I can learn all three languages here in this one. It's super cute, it's like a cyclopedia then for Moomin world and it's adorable and I regret nothing. Also got this map with it, which is so nice and also look at the adorable illustrations. I regret nothing. I feel like I should have bought more and maybe kind of different ones, like more story ones, but then at least I got like four completely different Moomin books. So they're all unique in their own way and I like that. So that was actually all the books books, but then I had a poll on Twitter asking if you wanted me to show you the textbooks I had in Japan, Japanese textbooks, and I got mostly yes. So I'm gonna do that since I asked you all. Not gonna spend too long on it, but first of all, we have J-Bridge. So this one, a Japanese textbook, it's text and grammar and stuff. But this one I had to have two semesters and it was, I hate it. I hated it so much. The thing with Japanese textbooks is that the answers to all the questions, you have it either in the back or in like this little pamphlet you get with the book, which is like, yes, I can admit I cheated sometimes because whew, I did not have the effort in me. I'm kind of guilty, but also I didn't have the effort. So you know what, just call me a bad student, it's fine. But yeah, I don't know, do I show you the inside? It's like a chapter and then we had like a text. Next page is whoa took what was happening in the chapter. Why am I like introducing you guys to my textbook? I don't know. First chapter was literally introducing and then we had a text and then they went through the grammar that was in the text. Yeah, yeah, I actually don't want to show you because then you can see my ugly handwriting. So that was the first one. I actually like, when I look at it, I want to cringe because I did not like this 
at all. Then we had another one that was much better, which was like just listening exercises. I listened to a CD and then we had to read this and say it over and then without script and stuff to like try to listen and have good pronunciation. So I have the CD still, of course. Where is it? I don't know. Is it here? I don't have the CD still. Where is it? It's here. I found it. So I could still listen to it and uh, learn from it. It also had Korean in it, but like just letters, not listening, but so Korean people could also understand it. Yay. I then had this pink one here, which is basically the same as J-Bridge, but much easier. And I really like this class a lot. Do I show you the inside? I kind of don't want to. But yeah, the text in this was like pretty easy. So that was a fun book, I guess. I did like this class. I kept them all because it's a nice way for me to go back and like, if I want to practice and stuff. So now I actually split them up in semesters for some reason, but we have this one. And this annoys me, and the same with the pink one is that we only went through like two or three chapters, but this one is literally like 200 pages long. And I think we went through the first two chapters and it was so expensive too. So that sucked. But yeah, it's, this is more of a conversation practicing orally than like grammar and stuff. It has a bit of grammar as well. It's basically called Dekori no Hongo, which means like, you can do this. You can learn Japanese. Let's go. I like this class a lot, but it annoys me that we didn't use this textbook that much, but now I have it and I can practice it as I want to. And then the next semester, I still had J Bridge, but also I got this kanji class. And this kanji book, I really, really liked actually. We didn't go through all the chapters, but I really liked the explanations and how it was set up and stuff. Of course, you have to practice outside the textbook, but I just really liked the setup of this one. So that was nice. And then I had this green one here, which kind of is the same type as the pink one, just this is a bit harder, I think. It was a bit more complicated. This was my best class to get over my pink one, I think. And I really liked, liked this book. It was very simple and just nicely explained and stuff. Yay. And then for all these books, I was like pre-intermediate-ish. But these two I actually took intermediate classes for. So we have this one where you're just writing sakabuns, which is like short composition slash papers. And this was just my sakuma class and I had to write like a sakabun all the time. Of course, I wrote sakabuns for all the other classes all the time, but this was like more complicated. Yay. And then for this one, it was just like weird expressions and grammar and stuff. And I think that other people actually had it last semester too, but I didn't go into intermediate for the next one. This was like the worst class I ever had. <laughs> Even worse than Jay's Bridge because it was so complicated and didn't understand much. Now it, it made me feel stupid. Most of the time I felt stupid in Japan. But yeah, I talk more about that in my Goodbye Japan video if you're interested. So that was all my textbooks. That was super interesting. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this haul. It was all the books and Japanese editions and not Japanese editions. I bought the one I was in Japan. I think I sent like all of them home except like four of them that I actually had room for or with in my suitcase. And yeah, that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed. Again, you will see me soon in a new video. Bye!